today, we want to discuss some of the derivatives that we found on Friday, or maybe didn't found on Friday. I guess the important thing is, am I gonna ask y'all what these derivatives are? And if the answer is no, they'd be like, oh yeah, yeah, we totally found all 20 of those derivatives, we're good. But if I'm like, oh, there might be a quiz at the end of the day. It's like, oh, no, 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 we have questions. See, I understand the student mind because I've been there. This, last, this first one, we got a, um, a sequence. It's not about which questions you ask. It's about the sequence that you ask them. So in this first one, we just want to introduce, we introduced um, the idea of finding partial derivatives where the other variable is considered constant. So for fx, y is considered constant and it will show up as a constant term or constant multiple. If it's a constant term, then the derivative is zero. If it's a constant multiple, then we just carry it along, just keep it. So five, seven, and eight, this is where we start introducing the chain rule into our deliberations. And that happened with five first. We want the sine of x cubed y to the fifth. So here, the chain rule. Here, the chain rule comes roaring back. When we look at x cubed y to the fifth, y to the fifth is included as a constant multiple or a constant factor in the partial with respect to x. The chain rule is going to be in play here. The derivative of sine of some stuff is cosine of that stuff times the derivative of that stuff. That's why I didn't write fx, because fx is going to involve the chain rule. And this y to the fifth is a constant factor just in the derivative of the inside part. The x cubed is a constant factor in any derivative with respect to y, any partial derivative with respect to y. That's only gonna come into play when we're doing the derivative of the inside. The chain rule is where we start. The derivative of sine of something is cosine of that thing times the derivative of that thing. And in this case, we start with the derivative of the inside with respect to x. So that means y to the fifth is a constant factor and the derivative of the inside is going to be three x squared and, the, and y to the fifth is a constant factor. So it just hangs out. We just keep it. This is not how we would write this with the polynomial part at the end where it might get confused as part of the argument of the cosine. So in writing our answer, we would wanna write the three X squared Y to the fifth part first. That would be a better order for writing things down. When we go on to Fy, we just, the same, uh, uh, we have the same opening for Fy of xy. This is still the derivative of sine of some stuff. The derivative of sine of some stuff is cosine of that stuff times the derivative of that stuff. 
In this case, we're taking the derivative of the stuff with respect to y. So x, x cubed is a constant factor. And we take the derivative of y to the fifth part, which is 5y to the fourth. This is definitely not how we would write this with the five in the middle of the X and Y. That's just poor form. I kind of do want to do problem number six. For those of you who don't remember, problem number six was a slight variation. It's the same setup, sign of some stuff, but in this case, the x cubed is going to be a constant term in the partial with respect to y, and the y to the fifth is a constant term in the partial with respect to x. So in problem number six, y to the fifth is now a constant term because of the plus. And x to the third is a constant term. So this was that chain, that, that little change, the difference between constant term, constant factor. Still at its core, it's a chain rule problem. The derivative of sine of some stuff is cosine of that stuff. Times the derivative of the stuff. In this case, we're taking the derivative with respect to x. Derivative of x cubed is three x squared. The derivative of y to the fifth with respect to x is zero. Because y to the fifth is a constant term with respect to x. So the derivative of the inside is 3x squared, but that y to the fifth is a constant term. We wouldn't write this, but we want to remind ourselves of where it went since we are new at this partial derivative business. And then similarly, for Fy, the derivative of sine of some stuff is cosine of that stuff times the derivative of that stuff. In this case, x cubed is a constant term with respect to y. So when we take the derivative of the inside, the derivative of x cubed with respect to y since that's a constant term, is going to be zero. We wouldn't write zero plus. We would just take the derivative of y to the fifth at five y to the fourth. How's everybody okay? It's a lot of time to spend practicing a skill that we essentially don't need to have after we're done with calculus.
So there might be something else going on that makes this important. You're not doing this because this is an important thing to do later on in your future career. The training aspect of this that makes this important. Think of this as lateral raises, but for math. If you're unfamiliar, lateral raises are when you like pull, like lifting straight up. You keep your arm straight and like in kind of the plane of your body and you pull, lift your arm straight out, right? So. That's not how you lift stuff up. No one ever looks at their trainer and says, well, that's not how you lift stuff up. I'm never gonna have to lift stuff up that way. Why do I have to do this? There clearly is a point to it. Because no, that's not how you lift stuff up. I'm not gonna go grab my bag, grab my backpack. Okay, I'll lift up my backpack straight away from my body, maximize the amount of torque that's happening at my shoulder. <laughs> But no one ever looks at their trainer and says, oh, when am I ever going to lift something up that way? But in math class, all the time. Trainer be like, I'll oh, do some walking lunges back and forth. I'm like, oh, when am I ever going to walk this way? That's not how I walk. But math class, all the time. You know what I mean? Let's look at problem number seven, because in problem number seven, things change. I move the X cube outside of the sign. So we have to be able to read what's going on here. So in F of X, Y, we've got the X cubed times the sine of Y to the fifth. And at this point, you might start thinking, oh, I see some product rule coming along, but not yet. We got to read what's going on. We've got this x cubed. It's outside the sign, but that factor sine of y to the fifth has no x in it. Sine of y to the fifth is all constant. There's no x in it. So sine of y to the fifth is all constant. In this case, it's a constant factor. In the partial with respect to x, sine of y to the fifth is just a constant factor. It doesn't matter that it has any other stuff attached to it. There's no x in sine of y to the fifth. y is a constant, y to the fifth is a constant, the sine of y to the fifth is also a constant. So that's all just a constant. x to the third is a constant factor in the partial with respect to y. So the interesting thing that happened in this variation is that we don't need the chain rule on one of the derivatives, but we will need the chain rule on another one. We're using different rules for each partial derivative. So that's the point of this problem. For the derivative with respect to x, I want the derivative of x cubed, which is three x squared, Sine of y to the fifth is all constant. So it just gets carried along and we're done. What we want to notice here is that in the partial with respect to y, we have two things happening to the y. It gets raised to the fifth power, then we take the sine of the result. That's a composition of functions. That means for the partial with respect to y, we will need the chain rule.
We need the chain rule for Fy because we can see two things happening to the y. It gets raised to the fifth power, and then we have the sign of that result. So for Fy, x cubed is still just a constant factor. But the derivative of sine of y to the fifth, here we need the chain rule. The derivative of sine of something is cosine of that thing times the derivative of that thing. Now, this is not how we would write this. It's a little bit of a mess, but this is where it, how it came together. But that would be a better form to write it. Is that okay? I do have a variation on this problem that I forget that I normally do that I forgot. I move the fifth power. I traded the order of the fifth power and sine. Instead of y to the fifth power first, then take the sine of the result, take the sine of y, then take the fifth power of the result. But the read is still the same. Aside from that change, that's only gonna change what happens when we get down to the chain rule. So this sine to the fifth y, is still just a constant factor. In the partial with respect to x. x cubed is still a constant factor in the partial with respect to y. But now the chain rule part is going to go in the other order. Note the order of the chain rule of the uh, note the order of operations in this chain rule. First, we do a fifth power, and second, we take the sign of whatever happened. But now in the chain rule. The first thing that happens is we take the sine of y and then we raise to the fifth power. So with respect to x, x cubed is the only variable part. Sine of the fifth y is still just constant factor. So 3x squared times sine of the fifth y. The way we typically read these is why we use this notation. If you've ever wondered why we put the power of the function over there with the function, 
It's because if we wrote sine of y in parentheses to the fifth power, it would sound the same as when we read sine of y to the fifth. So people are like, wait, 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 sine of y to the fifth or sine of y to the fifth? So they're like, you know what? Here's what we'll do. If it's sine of y to the fifth, we'll write sine to the fifth of y. And then we were like, oh, that's an awesome solution. We all high five each other. We're sure this is not going to cause problems later on. And there's someone in the back room. So I go, uh, about that notation combined with our inverse trig functions. So I go, okay, we've heard about your arc sine, arc tangent, but we're going to do the minus one thing. It'll be fine. It's not fine. Very few times mathematical notations betray us so badly, but there it is. So for Fy, x cubed, constant factor, x cubed, just like before. But now, the outside function is the fifth power. So that's the derivative of the outside. So we're going to have five times sine to the fourth. Of y. Then we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside and the inside function is sine of y. The derivative of sine y is cosine y. This is not how we would write this function. Because the five and the x cubed are not written in that order. I would wanna write this five x cubed I would probably write sine fourth y first. I don't know why. Any questions? How's everybody okay? So that's a variation that we didn't have on Friday. I wanted to include it here. I wanted to care, I care about reading the chain rule, how we read the chain rule. When you want to decide what, what is the outside function of the chain rule, think about order of operations. What happened first to the variable? First, we did a fifth power, then we did a sign. And in 7a, a for alternate reality, where I did this problem. And then on Monday, I had to do this problem as the alternate. So multiverse and all that. I switched the order that these functions happen. We did a sine first, then the fifth power. So the derivative, the outside derivative was five something to the fourth power. When in the previous problem, the outside function was sine of stuff. Questions? How's everybody okay? Incidentally, this is super useful, not necessarily to write down. It just takes too long to write down, but just like write down what's happening. What is this function telling us to do?
So we change things up a little bit. I'm using the same elements that I had in the previous problems. I got x cubed sine of x cubed plus y to the fifth. That's how we would spell this. It's not how we would read this. The product of the cube of x and the sine of the sum of the cube of x and the fifth power of y. No one wants to say it that way. We just want to S P E L L space I T. But it sounds ridiculous when we do that when we're talking and just spelling stuff. But in math, we just do that all the time. And the communication suffers for it. Anyway, so this one has a different read on it because X cube or the x specifically appears in two places there's an x cube at the front but there's also an x cube in the side so what we have to notice here is that in the partial with respect to x we're going to need to use the product rule there's two instances of the x cubed There are two instances of x and they are multiplied. This x cubed and the sine of x cubed. This tells us that we're gonna need the product rule. If instead of the x cubed appearing in the sine, if it appeared in some polynomial, I can just multiply everything out and just have x cubed appearing in a bunch of terms. But the x appears in a bunch of factors. That means product rule. x is in multiple factors, product rule. x is in multiple terms, go a term at a time. This is how differentiation works. So for f, x, I'm going to need to use the product rule. We need to recognize that we won't need the product rule for fy. x, this, I used x cubed both times. That was my big mistake on this problem. After I wrote it down, and I was playing the Rocky music for you to be inspired and do your training montage, I had to walk out the room. I was like, oh, you used x cubed on both of them. What's wrong with you? But anyway, so I screwed that up royal. I ruined calc three forever because I used the next cube in both places. But no way. notice that we're going to need the product rule for fx, but not for fy. We need the product rule for fx. We do not need the product rule for fy the y is only one instance. When you want to make sure that you understand these derivatives and this process, this is where you want to focus your explanation. Can you make this argument? Can you explain this to someone who is confused? Not can you write down the answer? That usually happens before you can explain it. So fx, we're going to use the product rule. We take the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. The derivative of sine of something is cosine of that thing. Times the derivative of that thing. Now in the derivative of that thing, y to the fifth is a constant term in fx, in a partial with respect to x. So the derivative of cosine x cubed 
oh, sorry, derivative of the x cubed plus y to the fifth is 3x squared. This is 100% not how we would want to write this, mainly because that second term has the x cubed and the 3x squared all split apart. But this is how it would fall out of just writing down product rule. This first term is good. Thank you, first term, for coming out nice and clean. Second term, uh, I spelled plus wrong. So the 3x squared and the x cubed will combine to make a 3x to the fifth cosine of x cubed plus y to the fifth. I suppose we can factor 3x squared out, leaving a sine of x cubed plus y to the fifth and x cubed cosine of x cubed plus y to the fifth. Sometimes that reveals some stuff. Sometimes not. So, I don't know, this is how I would assess these three. Not from a process standpoint, but that first one from a final answer standpoint is not good. So, yeah, no. Don't just leave your answers raw like that. Second one's good. That was what, that's what I would expect. That's our baseline. Then our third one's like, all right, but, but for a while. For Fy, we don't need the product rule because y only appears in one factor. X cubed is a constant factor in the derivative with respect to y, so it just carries along. The derivative of sine of stuff is cosine of stuff times the derivative of stuff. In this case, x cubed is a constant term the derivative of y to the fifth is 5y to the fourth, which we would write as 5x cubed y to the fourth cosine x cubed plus y to the fifth. So once again, we don't need the product rule for fy because y only appears in one factor. We don't need the product rule for fy since y only appears in one factor. So a better way for me to say two instances of x would be, have been to say, x appears in two factors. That one, I think, be a better way to say x appears in two factors. That means we're going to need the product rule. The product rule is needed when our variable appears in more than one factor.
Any questions? See, y'all would have been better off if your Calc 1 teacher had said, you need the product rule when X appears in more than one factor. Oh, crap, some of you were my Calc 1 students. Man, your Calc 1 teacher was incompetent. Unfortunately for you, he still is. Oh, well. Any questions? All right, so these are the things that we want to look at. We had training day on Friday. So hopefully you sorted these out. Hopefully this helps with your ability to explain what's going on in each of these derivatives. All right, that's going to do it for today. I will see y'all on tomorrow. Everybody have a good day and thanks for playing.